Hi, I'm Alois Mungira and you're listening to this FM Sport Podcast. Z, the, the, the hottest station in the nation. Z, 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 Z FM Stereo. Z, FM Stereo. It's Lionel Messi. He scored. The goal the world wanted. It's time for the biggest sports stories. It's Neymar trying to feed it through. It's a stretch and it's in. And I can't remember the last time I saw something like this. Extraordinary scenes. The biggest interviews. It's more difficult. Obviously, it's more difficult. And all the analysis right here. If they play poorly, they come back, they've got all the excuses. They can't have it both ways. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. ZFM Sport on a Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday, everybody. Good evening and welcome to it. Our time just gone five after the hour of six on your favorite station, ZFM Stereo, my station, your station. My name is Mike Madoda. Today, joined by Barry Manandi and Sean Tafirinika behind the desk. And Martha Mamombe is still in the studio. Good evening, Martha. Hi. Uh, are you Hello, Martha. Hi, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Martha Mamombe. I oh, love it. Love now, it. Uh, Martha, you keen to follow a football? Because, uh, you know, you always get the situation where, where, where you know, either girls are getting more and more involved in following sport or mm-hmm. they follow their boyfriend's team. Well, I... Uh... Which category do you fall in? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you put me on the spot. I am not really a football fan, mm. but every now and again... Depending on what's happening in my life, I tend to follow football. So, yeah. Uh, so, you've been a Chelsea supporter at one I, point? I have. A Liverpool I have. supporter at Liverpool one time? <laughs> what supporter are you now? Um, what, is, what is the team? Uh, Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea. Chelsea. I'll go with okay. Chelsea. He's, a, he's a Chelsea fan, is he? Oh, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> what, did, you, did you play much sport when you were at school? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Nah. I did try hockey and tennis for a little bit, but then I stopped because training was just, oh my gosh. Just uh, too it, much effort. Yeah, it was just too much for me. So, yeah, I, I went to, to the debate the club. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I joined the debate club and that's what I did for a minute. Absolutely. That is, of course, uh, Martha Mamombe. Current, uh, current affairs here at uh, ZFM Stereo, my station, uh, your station. And you can catch her now and again at the top of the hour as she keeps you up to date with what's happening in Zimbabwe and around the world. Well, our job is to put you on the pulse of what's happening in the world of sport. And we've got a power pack show today, don't we, Barry? We do indeed. Tennis Zimbabwe has been rocked by the resignation of President Martin. Lock on the eve of the Davis Cup draw. Tim Seyfert was explosive from the front as New Zealand stormed to an 84 run win over India in the first T20 of a three match series. And in the beautiful game, we preview tonight's first leg Copa del Rey between Barcelona and Real Madrid as El Clasico once again takes center stage in world football. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors, and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. All right, now Tennis Zimbabwe has been rocked by the resignation of President Martin Locke on the eve of the Davis Cup draw, which was held in London this afternoon. Locke's departure also comes just a few months before the next elective annual meeting. The National Association confirmed his departure and said it was because of Locke's pressing work commitments. According to the te- to ten- Tennis Zimbabwe Constitution, Vice President Bigi Magarira takes over as the acting president until the next elective meeting. We had a chat with Tennis Zimbabwe manager Cliff Nokwara and he spoke to us about Locks Regis resignation and the association's 2019 schedule. The circumstances were he cited uh, work commitment. He is uh, now too busy and it will be difficult for him to continue uh, to, uh, to, uh, running two, miles, two offices. Well, it shouldn't affect anything. We'll continue functioning. Right now, we obviously are... Uh, Waiting for Rory Davis Cup, to which should happen today. Uh, we might be playing in April or September, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when when when, when we will play and where. But uh, the fact remains, we will be participating in the Davis Cup. 
And then we also have uh, events, uh, international events lined up in, in March, where we are at an advanced stage in terms of preparation. We have a team event, 12 and under in Blawai March, and then 18 and under International Tennis Federation, 18 and under uh, event in, also in March. So all those are happening. See. Well, we understand that Locke, uh, Be- uh, Martin Locke is a businessman who is in various ventures, uh, which include home apparel and transport. And we know, Mike, that business at the moment is, is, is kind of tough. Uh, it, it's uh, quite involving. Him citing work commitments, you... You buy that? Yeah, well, listen, Barry, right now, uh, across all business uh, sectors in Zimbabwe, it's all hands on deck. On, uh, <laughs> you know, hands to the pump. You know, everyone's got to be putting in a, uh, a shift. And so you understand the challenges of a man uh, trying to keep his uh, business concerns going uh, and then having the dual responsibility of uh, effectively uh, administrating tennis in Zimbabwe. But for me, Barry, the greater concern is that at that level uh, of leadership in sports administration and just taking a look at tennis in isolation uh, because of this story. I'm concerned by the fact that we've got people who are doing these jobs on a bit part basis. I think we should be at a level where we are employing professional administrators, a professional CEO who's tasked with heading tennis in Zimbabwe and that's his 8 to 5 job, Mm -hmm. not something that he's doing on the side because of passion or because he is the father uh, to the Locke family, of Mm -hmm. course uh, Benji and uh, Courtney, Mm -hmm. as well as the sisters, uh, Sean describing them as a Family of very good-looking blondes, uh, yes, and, sure. uh, and, and, and Sean very quick to spot uh, the the, the aesthetics yes. of uh, people sooner yes. than uh, what they provide. So yeah. he's very impressed by yeah. the Locke family. So, so for me, that, that that's a concern. You know that uh, he was doing this uh, on a, on a part-time basis, mm. uh, and you see that across the board, actually, yeah. uh, in all our uh, sporting disciplines, that the people who are in these offices are almost doing it again on a voluntary basis. Uh, the, it's not an eight-to-five job. Mm. It's something where they nip into the office for maybe two or three hours at Zifa headquarters, uh, at Zimbabwe Cricket, uh, or wherever they are, and then try and make some decisions, try and make a few calls, send a few emails. But sport has reached a level where it's a business. Yeah. It's a functional business that should actually be uh, taken as seriously as the eight to five business that he's retiring uh, to think yeah. uh, to run. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is my concern for me, that we should be getting professionals who are heading mm. up our sports administration bodies. Most certainly. And uh, albeit that, uh, that he was on that uh, part-time basis, he, he, he seems to have ably led the organization because you look at us hosting the D- Davis Cup ITF Futures events that we continue to hear. Uh, we also saw the conversion of Harare Sports Club into a fully-fledged tennis facility as well. So he seemed to have a vision for it. And what basically what you're saying is that if we had somebody who was dedicated and devoted to it, perhaps we could have actually gone uh, a little bit further. So, so it's, it's a tragic loss. If, if he was My, able to achieve this yeah. on a part-time basis, Imagine what he could have achieved if he was was full-time, permanent, permanent at Tennis Zimbabwe and with the requisite support from the organization, he would have achieved more. It probably poses a a constitutional question, doesn't it, Bunj, whereby um, the the, the Tennis Zimbabwe president is probably constitutionally a non-executive position, meaning that it's it's something that you do and you carry on with with your life. Perhaps, uh, uh, as, as Mike is arguing, perhaps at that leadership role, we need an executive president and as well as an executive chief executive because sports like tennis it's 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 very technical but it's something that we can train and build and we saw the development of tennis the younger age groups we're actually doing very well as a nation and if we're able to lead those through we can actually be competitive you see this is uh, the position where we are uh, very way we don't take sport too seriously in this country, like Mark said, it's supposed to be a business. Look at it now. We don't have a, an executive president, non executive. Then we don't have a permanent CEO. So, who is exactly running the show? Uh, the manager, Cliff Nokar. You, you <laughs> see now. So, that's, that's where we are. We need to be, sit there and say, this is where we are. Sure. Even the president should also be an executive, an executive president who is actually taking part yeah. in whatever, probably. That's where we are lacking in all sport. Like Mike said, across the board, we have got people that are just coming into sport as a hobby. Let's give you, of course, uh, the Davis Cup uh, draw. Zimbabwe got a tough draw in the Davis Cup after they were paired against Romania in the Europe-Africa Group 2 zone. Zimbabwe remained in the group after they won their tie against Turkey in Harare last year before losing to Poland in Warsaw. Romania are the top seeds of the Europe-Africa Group 2 zone and Zimbabwe will travel to Bucharest for their tie, which will be played on the weekend of the 5th and 6th of 
April. The format, Barry, remains unchanged mm-hmm. from the trials that were introduced in 2018 with ties being made up of four singles rubbers and one doubles rubber contested over the space of two days. And Zimbabwe, of course, will have their work cut out for them according to the rankings that have been recently re- uh, released. Yeah, because they remained, uh, we remain in the same position, which is 61, and we're one of the six unseeded sides in the 12-team Euro Africa Group 2 alongside Bulgaria, who are ranked 60. 64th, uh, Georgia 63rd, Morocco 57th, Slovenia 56th, and Turkey ranked 59th. Uh, this is EFM Sport on a Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday. Don't miss out on our play of the day that comes back bang in the middle of the show. We are telling the story of Robert Nestor Marley. Bob Marley, the most famous Bob Barry said. I <laughs> argued that is the I argued that it's the one at the blue roof. Oh you my know, God, I, you're throwing that in my face. I'm you? telling you, I'm telling you. I mean, <laughs> listen. Maybe we should actually ask our, our listeners, you know, who's the most famous Bob? Bob Marley or Bob Mugabe? You know, just, just send us a WhatsApp, 0731-168-045. Whilst you're at it, send us your thoughts, your views, your analysis, your take on what's happening in the world of sport, local as well as international. And don't forget the Pro Feeds Daily Sports Trivia. Send us the hashtag Pro Feeds Trivia. You could be the one listener we get to call back. Hi, this is Benjamin Luck. I'm on the Zimbabwe Davis Cup team, and you're listening to ZFM Sport. To give you a chance to send through those Bob messages, uh, let's give you the rest of the local sports news roundup, starting with rugby, where Zimbabwe rugby have stepped up their preparations for the Rugby Africa Under-20 Bartes Trophy Pool B tournament to be held in the country in April as the Young Sables seek to earn promotion. Back to the top tier of African rugby, Zimbabwe will be banking on home advantage when they battle it out against Ivory Coast, Morocco and Madagascar for promotion to Pool A, with the tournament set to run from the 1st to the 7th of April at a venue yet to be confirmed. The host will take on Ivory Coast in the opening match and the, with the winner meeting the winner of the other match pitting Morocco and Madagascar in the final. In the athletics news, plans are at an advanced stage by the National Athletics Association of Zimbabwe, the NAAZ, to avail monetary rewards for athletes that participate in track and field events. According to the NAAZ President Tendai Tagara, now the move is meant to motivate athletes that compete in track events organized by the National Association. For many years, long-distance athletes have enjoyed monetary rewards at branded competitions which NAAZ supervises and now the association wants to introduce the same incentives to track and field events. Let's wrap it up with football news where Chicken in have signed goalkeeper Donovan Bernard and midfielder Tichao Chipunza who were playing for Ngezi Platinum Stars. The Gamecocks declared their interest in the pair a few weeks ago and Ngezi agreed to release the players. Uh, Bernard and Chipunza joined forward Clive Augusto who completed his move to Bulawayo from Ngezi in January. Here we go again. Enjoy World Class Radio Online. ZFM Stereo is available on TuneIn. Search for ZFM Stereo and you got it. To all you Twitter heads, connect with ZFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash ZFM Stereo. Forward slash ZFM Stereo. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. The third and final T20 between Pakistan and South Africa is currently on. But before we get to give you a status report on that match, we'll tell you of a result of a match that was played earlier on today. India crushed their worst ever T20 defeat when an aggressive 84 by Team Safe 8 set New Zealand up for an 80-run win in Wellington. It was one of those complete performances that you do search for. Beamed New Zealand skipper Kane Williamson. Happy to see his side bounce back from the drubbing inflicted by India. India in the recent ODI series. The explosive 86 run opening partnership of 50 deliveries by Seyfate and Colin Munro laid the foundations for the Black Caps to build their third highest T20 total of 219 for the loss of six wickets. India were all out in reply for just 139 with four balls remaining in only the eighth time they failed to bat through at 20 over innings. Now New Zealand's young wicketkeeper batsman Tim Seyfate lauded Team Salvi and Lockie Ferg for the timely wickets that helped their side gain complete control over India in the already stiff run chase. 
representing your country and, and doing that tonight and starting the series off um, with a win like that, it um, shows us that we've come to play. And obviously, after the one day, as you know, it's a bit unfortunate. But yeah, as I say, we wanted to do the first punch and we did that tonight. And I think it's just a good opportunity for myself, um, being up the top of the order, to you know show that um, you know I came back from one to seven. But you know, at the end of the day, we got off to um, a good start for the team, and then that's the main thing. See. India has dominated on the tour of New Zealand. Barry uh, putting in uh, performances that have had uh, many pundits uh, recently uh, announce them as favourites uh, for the World Cup to be played uh, in England and Wales later on this year. But in this performance, New Zealand reminded us why they go into many a tournament as dark horses. And mm. it will not be surprising in England and Wales if they're right there at the end, like we saw in the last edition of the World Cup in 2015, where they were in the final. Yeah, and uh, even when we, I think we had a discussion uh, a couple of months ago uh, where we were discussing uh, permutations around the World Cup still some distance away then and you actually said that New Zealand was one of the sides that you had to look at uh, as a dark horse as a team with an X factor and this is the X factor that we've seen come to the fore because not only did they beat New Zealand um, India they absolutely obliterated them and, and you'd have never expected it on the basis of the fact that India was the form team. Well, Alois, you're one certainly for excitement. Uh, you love uh, to see the exciting side of sport. I remember yeah, when we were wickets talking... Falling. Yeah, wickets falling <laughs> and sixes and fours being yes. hit, the ball going across, uh, over the boundary and that's what New Zealand has a lot of. Yes. Batsmen who are able to hit we the hit sixes the yeah. and the fours and when those batsmen click, they're dangerous side. Yeah, when they arrive, they are. I like it, the exuberance. They don't worry much. You know, when they want to come, they come and hit the ball. You know, like you're saying, I like it. I like it very much. But like Barry said, they are dark horse. But when they are beating India, mm. you know, they graduate from being dark horses to actually like one of the, you know, the uh, big teams, yeah. To, yeah, yeah. The teams yeah. to watch as well. If they were just playing, um, you know, just beating uh, India by a small margin and all that. But if they are doing that to India, then you, you can actually elevate them to like, you know what, these guys can actually go all the way. And this just wasn't a defeat for India. India's previous worst defeat was 49 runs to Australia at Bridgetown in 2010. This was almost double the yeah, <laughs> margin yeah, yeah. of a defeat they for India. And <laughs> India's spin bowling all round. Krunal Pandya mentioned how they couldn't stop leaking runs and that it attributed to their big loss. Whenever you are chasing 218 runs, it's not that easy. So obviously, I guess uh, in the initially also we gave runs uh, as well as uh, we were keep leaking runs in the middle over as well. So obviously, when it comes to chasing, it was difficult to chase 218 no matter how the wicket is. Uh, and obviously, when the score again the scoreboard pressure is also there. So for any new batter or the batsman who's batting, batting, he's always uh, looking for fours and sixes. So I can yeah, you can say the power play as well as the middle overs also we gave plenty of runs. Uh, they batted really well as well. At the same time we bowled few loose delivery as well so I guess it was the it was combination of both what I can see the second T20 in the three match series is in Auckland on a Friday and of course India were dominant in the one day international series that preceded this T20 international series winning that series of 4-1 let me give you an update of what's happening in South Africa I did say it's the third T20 between the Sultans of Swing Pakistan and the Proteas of South Africa South Africa winning the toss electing to field meaning that Pakistan are in uh, with the bat and they're currently 48 for 2 after 5.5 over so the runs are flowing but the wickets are falling we'll give you another update just before we call it uh, quits on today's edition of ZFM Sport coming up we take you around the world in 60 Hi my name's Ryan Cairns Sunshine Tour professional golfer and you're listening to ZFM Sport Around the world in 60 seconds, international sports news. Well, we know you're not Philly as fog, but we'll take you around the world nonetheless. This is in 60. Starting in Saudi Arabia, where Brooks Kepka has publicly rebuked Sergio Garcia for damaging greens at the European Tour Saudi International on Saturday and said it is time for the Spaniard to grow up. Garcia was disqualified from the event after the third round for what the Tour deemed serious mis- misconduct under Rule 1.2a. Uh, Garcia is understood to have made scuff marks and a divot hole on the putting surfaces at the Royal Greens Golf and Country Club in an angry outburst. Uh, staying in the Middle East, this time in the UAE, uh, world number 
number one and two-time Grand Slam winner Naomi Osaka has pulled out of next week's Qatar Open because of a back injury. No more details were given about the injury, but Osaka also withdrew from the Hong Kong Open last October because of problems with her back. Her withdrawal will come as a blow to organizers in Doha, who also announced that her place as top seed in the Qatar Open will be taken by the woman she recently replaced as world number one. That's Romania, Romania's Simona Halep. We land in Italy, where Ferrari chairman and CEO Luis Camilleri has confirmed the Scuderia will increase their budget in 2019 as they look to raise their Winners' Cup uh, for the first time since 2008. The Scuderia have been the closest challengers to Mercedes over the past two seasons and had a great chance to break their lockdown on the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships in 2018. However, a series of high-profile team and driver areas errors allowed Mercedes' Lewis Hamilton to run away with the proceedings in the second half of the season as he went on to claim a fifth World Championship and maintain Mercedes' dominance of the constructors' standing since the turbo hybrid era began, and that was in 2014. That's your sport, Ian 60. The daily sports trivia question is brought to you by Profeeds. Profeeds, your feed and farm professionals. And it's so, so simple to participate in our competition. You simply send us a WhatsApp message with the hashtag Profeeds Trivia. And you might be the one lucky listener we call back. You fill two questions. And if you get both correct, you'll be our daily winner. And in with a chance of winning our fabulous first prize of 2019, we continue to say it is absolutely fabulous. It's a Capri double door 290 litre fridge. The first draw of the year will take place on Friday, the 22nd of February. And our quiz master today... Here's Mike. Oh, well, we have a caller on the line, and it's Tiago, the delightfully named Tiago. Cantara. Not surprising, he's in Borrowdale. <laughs> How are you doing, Tiago? Good evening, gentlemen. I- is that oh. your name, Tiago, or Ndere Nyengo? You know, that's the girl's name. Hey, hey guys, nah. uh, my name is Tiago. Is that your actual name? Yes. Really? Fantastic. Yes. Tiago, you, you, you said uh, in your message that you did, had trials with Spanish clubs, is that correct? Yes. Where? Um, I went to Real Sociedad, um, that didn't work out, and then Real Valladolid came when I was 15, and then, yeah, I had injuries then, so it didn't work out because I had problems with my knees, so my mom said, you can't go, yeah. And that was- have you tried playing a bit of football here in Zimbabwe? I have tried, um, I got in touch with Coach Raman Gungu at some point, and then, um, that didn't work out as well, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, I think he, I think you should get in touch uh, with one Barry Manandi as well. <laughs> yeah. he, he's known to do, to, please, to dabble do. a bit as a, as a football administrator or even Alo as well. We'll, we'll have a look. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, to have yeah. a look and uh, see if they can assist you in terms How of old are you now? getting your uh, your career on track. Nineteen, ten, twenty. Perfect. All right, let's get into the questions. Uh, the first question, you know the format, right? You get two questions, one local and then the other one is international. International, yes. Excellent. Well, the first question is a local question. What does the acronym HBL stand for? Think local. Think Zimbabwe. HBL. Do you need a clue? Yeah, pretty much. The sport is basketball. Oh, that's the Rari Basketball League. Oh, well, oh, well Excellent. Good, good man. Just one more question, and I think this one oh, is a simple. dolly. This one is simple. Uh, the Davis Cup is a competition in which sport? Tennis. Yes, oh, this one was... I think this is the easiest question we've ever had in this trivia. Yeah, I answer tennis. That's easy. Oh, nice one. Well, Tiago, congratulations to you. Your name goes in the hat for the first draw of the year. It'll be on Friday, the 22nd of February. You could win yourself a Capri Double Door 290 litre fridge. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Brilliant. The daily sports trivia question was brought to you by Profeeds. Profeeds, the performance feed. To all you Twitter heads, connect with CFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash CFM Stereo. Forward slash CFM Stereo. Fan zone. Get in touch with the team and have your say your way. Operator. 
the show. That's for the fans. Get in touch with us with your thoughts, your views. 0731 168 045. That's our WhatsApp number. That's 0731 168 045. You can also follow and interact with us on Twitter at ZFM Sport or even in our individual capacities. We'll continue the conversation even after the show is over at Gazaman 14. If you want to follow Alois Bunjira, Barry Manandi by name, Mike Madoda by name, Chris Gray by name. You'll also get Mark Pozzo and Sean Tafirinika as well on Twitter. You will indeed. And remember, we're running that poll of who's the famous Bob uh, between Bob Marley and Bob Mugabe. Well, it's a mixed reaction, Mike, because <laughs> it's a split decision. Oh, my God. This this too one, close to call. Too close to call. This one says, obviously, Bob Mugabe. And then this one is from Mike in Bula. He says, Bob Marley is the greatest Bob ever. Uh, this one is um, Mpilo. Uh, and it says, uh, Bob Marley is the f- most famous Bob hands down uh, let's take ah, a the jury's still out it's still out yeah. the this jury's one, still out somebody says Bob Seger <laughs> who? <laughs> Bob Seger nah nah <laughs> who's he? and then this one this one says in recent years the famous Bob has to be the blue roof guy <laughs> the blue roof guy <laughs> yes and then uh, if he's listening right now I'm sure guy. he's he's just leaned over his sofa as I told you <laughs> I'm <laughs> leading in the poll in fact he actually is leading he's edged ahead because this one says guys it's definitely our Bob Mugabe and then this one says Bob Mugabe Chim Dara <laughs> <laughs> Okay we also want you To send us your predictions For tonight's El Clasico The big game In the Spanish Cup Between Barcelona And Real Madrid At the Camp New We're building up To that game On the show Send us your predictions Who carries the day First of all Will Lionel Messi play If he doesn't Can Barcelona Beat Real Madrid Or will Real Madrid Feel that they have A bigger chance To upset What many people Are saying Could be a routine victory for Barcelona so keep sending us your predictions and we'll try and read as many as we can got a prediction for you already oh and it's phenomenal it's phenomenal Uh. it's Barcelona 5 Real Madrid 1 wow (laughs) no Nah, Shucks. Man, not without not Lionel Messi. Not that. Nah, if Lionel Messi wow. not there, those goals are uh, we, 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 We've seen it happen before, though. Well, you know, yes, uh, have, yeah. But uh, without Lionel Messi, I doubt it's going to happen. It's hard to see. Mm. Nah, I doubt it. 2 yeah. 1. Indeed, Maybe. yeah. We'll read as many as we can. As you said, uh, 0731 168 045. The big leagues, the big teams, the big players. The beautiful game on ZFM Sport. The league that makes football oh so beautiful. Where artistry and strokes of genius are the order of any day. Where the game is played with a smile and the little master creates his magic. It's Lionel Messi! All the news from the Spanish La Liga on ZFM Sport. The goal the world wants it! Quick glance at the WhatsApp platform. There's another prediction here that says Real 2. Barca nil, and that's where we're stopping off in La Liga. Well, Copa del Rey, to be fair, Barcelona head coach Ernesto Valverde says facing rivals Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey semifinals makes the tie a Clásico twice over. Madrid will be at the Camp Nou tonight uh, for the first leg of, of the f- last four clash, uh, having been thrashed 5-1 on their La Liga visit to Barca in October. Uh, but Madrid are in good form under Santi Solari, having won their past five games in a row in all competitions, while Barca were held two all by Valencia last time out Lionel Messi suffered a thigh injury in that game having scored twice to bring Barca level and Valverde has indicated he will not rest his captain unless he proves his fitness and so with or without Lionel Messi it's two Barca's isn't it uh, yeah to be honest uh, <laughs> I, 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 I take a look at, at, at this game and I think um, Real Madrid will have a lot of motivation mm. uh, I feel they they know that they they, they have very minimal chances of chasing down Barcelona uh, in the league, uh, La Liga, especially after Atletico Madrid, who had the opportunity to sort of like uh, uh, put a bit of pressure uh, between the chasing pack and Barcelona, failed to capitalize, meaning that Barcelona, instead of heading into the next uh, round of La Liga games with just a lead of three points, mm. now have a lead of six points yeah. over the team that's in second. Real Madrid, though, of course, have cut that gap uh, to eight points, but still eight points against a team like Barcelona. You are it's having to ask three teams to do the business yeah. for you before you actually catch up to Barcelona. So we can safely say that Barcelona are odds on favourites to retain their La Liga crown. But in the cup, Real Madrid will have motivation because it's two matches. Mm. 
you're up against each other and Real Madrid know that if they beat Barcelona they are almost assured of one the title the because cup, yeah. Atletico Madrid is already out of the competition yeah. mm-hmm. and there's no one that will be standing in the way of a coronation. Is that enough emo- emo- motivation? It certainly seems like for all of us in the studio here, can they actually lift themselves up? And because we've seen, uh, under Santi Solari, yes, it seems to have stabilised, but yeah. it's still a Jekyll and Hyde team because there have been times when we think to ourselves that they're not playing that great. Can they lift themselves over these two legs to deliver? Yeah, like my team, uh, this is this is a motivation that they have. You know, they know that they know they're not gonna catch up in the league, and this is the one that they can actually. You know, it's actually for their supporters, for their fans as well. It's actually something that they can also take home and say we 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 knock them out. And cup matches, you can do it. They have ex- they have the experience. We have known Real Madrid to be very competitive in cup matches. They can deliver. But like I was asking you off air, Benzema, Benzema needs to come to the party. Mm-hmm. Does he does he ever? Score. No, in no, no. He's oh, no, he, he, or yeah. in the El Clasico. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Does he have a score in the El right Clasico? In terms of him coming yeah. into this game, he is he is coming. Hot. Re- yes. yes. That's why I'm saying I need mm. him to come there because in El Clasico he he vanishes, he disappears. So I want him to take over and do something. Well, I th- oh, by the way, I'm a Real Madrid fan. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I, I, think, I, I think I think your comments lead us very nicely into sort of team news and we've all much re- reported on Messi and, and his uh, uh, shaky avail- availability. But also there's the issue of Usman and Dembele. We've spoken on this show uh, what sort of an impact he's had, well, how much he's come along and now it's likely he will be unavailable for Valverde as well in this game and again, that's quite a miss, isn't it? Mike? Yeah, it's quite a miss but not as important, no, not even half as important as Lionel Messi. Uh, never, never, never. And so uh, Barcelona would have loved him to be there. If Barcelona were able to pick their, their strongest 11 uh, for this game, uh, it wouldn't have mattered uh, which 11 uh, Real Madrid puts out. I yeah, think yeah, uh, yeah. it would have been a comfortable victory for Barcelona. I, I think when they play uh, with Suarez in the middle, Lionel Messi and Dembele are and Dembele, either side yeah. of... Yeah. Uh, they are full of goals yeah. and they can do the business and with Vidal, Rakitic and Busquets, they've now got a midfield that can match Real Madrid in terms of grit mm. as well as creativity yeah. because uh, Vidal brings a lot of balance a lot of work uh, and a lot of fuggery uh, in, in that midfield he does, he does the dirty <laughs> job uh, Rakitic always of course uh, stitches things between defence uh, as well as uh, attack and then Busquets hey what can you say about Busquets he's yeah. a consummate uh, operator in the heart of their midfield So, but the problem is they have got uh, one or two star players that are going to be missing and so once again Real Madrid will see this as an opportunity yeah. an opportunity to try and get the business done and they know that it's important that they they take the match back to Madrid with them still in it the only problem though is that Barcelona tends to play very well in Madrid in, in yeah, Madrid, yeah. That's the biggest problem Real, yeah. Barcelona or they, they play better mm. against Real Madrid in Madrid, in Madrid. Than, than, than in Barcelona but like Mike said uh, Real Madrid can actually look at Barcelona and say they are lacking that attacking edge you know mm. that needle you know they Dembele the Nippy one is he might not play. Yeah. Um Lionel Messi, the Nippy one. He might um, um what is Suarez. Suarez, Suarez yeah. is, Coutinho, is predictable. You know, they it becomes kind of predictable. They, they yes. are predictable. They can and it becomes slower. Yeah, they are slower and predictable, they can be dealt with. But those those two that run with the ball, they make the, any defense go in disarray. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's not there. So they can actually afford to maintain their share and, with and, the ones that are playing. And the Real Madrid defense, now that you talk about it, is, is has been hardly convincing uh, it's not. Uh, this season. So that's why they can take they can breathe without <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> so consequently, I think it's a Barcelona side, even without those two, that can still get a goal or two. The question is, who's going to score more? The 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 important fact in this match, like in all El Clasicos, the first goal, the opening goal, is always important. Uh, whoever gets it uh, gets in the ascendancy, and mm. uh, you you get the feeling that uh, Barcelona will be aiming uh, to get that first goal, uh, yeah. just to make sure that they they throw the cat amongst the pigeons, for sure. uh, because they know that Real Madrid, whilst they have improved in the last sort of like six, uh, five six weeks under Solari, their confidence is fragile. Yep. It doesn't take much to get them back to a place where they begin to doubt themselves again. So Barcelona will be looking, hey, let's get a fast start against Real Madrid mm. and make sure that we got these guys on the back foot. Yeah, and if Real Madrid score, they will pack a bus. Yeah. If they, they score first, they will pack a bus. And they start playing on yes. the counter, which yes. actually suits their game. Exactly. Yes, it suits their game. And also, Real Madrid have proven this season, even under Solari, that they're not very good chasers. They, are, they have the capacity to, but they're not great chasers at all. 
the rivalry. The captain likes the touch paper. It is blue touch paper. Always him on Derby Day. All the stars. Absolutely brilliant again from Mo Salah. The twinkling feet, the ice cold finish, the Egyptian on fire. And all the game changing moments. Aguero! All the updates from the Premier League on CFM Sport. This is the league we want to watch. Uh, from Spain, a quick hop, step and a jump across the English Channel into, of course, the home of the most popular league in the world where Pep Guardiola, arguably the most popular manager in the world, says the competition at the top of the Premier League is so fierce that the title is likely to be decided on the final day of the season and may even come down to goal difference. Guardiola's Manchester City are currently second in the table, three points behind Liverpool, who will but will lipfrog their rivals on goal difference if they secure a win at Everton tonight. Champion City have been reinstalled as favourites for the title by bookmakers after Liverpool stuttered to two draws in their last two matches. But Guardiola believes Jurgen Klopp's team will push his side all the way. Let's hear from Pep. I'm feeling in the last week, so will be a lot of surprises and will be tough for every team to win on games because the contenders and no contenders and all the teams had their abilities, capacities and, and skills to, to make create problems, make you create problems and and try to to do no, you know, what I'm more concerned or what when I I talk a lot with my players and insist to that, to never forget who we are like a team and 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 doing what, what we have to do, we are a strong team. That is what I wanna watch every single day. See. I don't think there are a lot of people out there who are pinning their hopes on Everton to stop the juggernaut that is Manchester City because if you take a look at their record, they've won just one of their last 11 Premier League games versus City, drawn four and lost six, beating them 4-0 at Goodison Park in January 2017. That's the only anomaly in that run-off matches. Can it be repeated? I don't think so. No, no, I don't think it can be. Uh, in truth, this Manchester City side is... Uh, if not the best, one of the best teams in the world. And so, you're, 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 yes, every team will have its blips. Every team will slip up. And City is, is not uh, immune to that. But I don't think tonight is the night. I think this Everton side hasn't got enough, is too young, is too much in transition to do any damage to Manchester City. But when we take a look at uh, the last four seasons, Alois, uh, City has never done the double, the league double of Everton. Uh, so there's always been a win, but uh, there's also been a draw in those matches. So Everton may not be the pushovers that, that people think they are, especially at Goodison Park. They tend to play with vim and vigour. And once again, like we said of El Clasico, I think for Everton it would be important that they get on the score sheet first. Yeah, uh, Mike, but if you look at the, at, at the Everton of the previous years, they've been more competitive than this one mm. that, that, we are, that we are seeing right now. Like Betis, they are in, 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 in a transition and now they are playing a, a Manchester City that are very cautious, that know their position, that they can't afford to slip up. So in, a, in, a, in, a, in this situation as well, it's an Everton that is really not playing for much in the league at the moment. So it's I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that if Everton is the team that, I, that is going to, to derail Manchester City at the moment. All right, predictions, gents? Yo, uh, I reckon Man City's got three goals on Everton. I think it's, yeah, 3-0. Three 3-0? Nil. Three nil? Yeah. At uh, Goodison Park? At least. Yeah, Leroy Sane, 3-1. Three 3-1. One. Three one. Right. Leroy Sane is going to run rings around. Run him. rings if he's selected. If he, I, uh, I, I, if I think he's he will be selected. <laughs> I hope he is. For the sake of my fantasy football team, okay. I hope he is. Aguero scores tonight. Uh. Gentlemen, look for a bumper harvest in my fantasy team. Is he your captain? No, he, he's my captain. He, How he, many points has he given you so far? My man, uh, I haven't checked. but He's he 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 a hat trick last time out. He had a hat last time out. So now... If he if he capitalizes just one goal just of those three, goal. or even a brace. Now, now <laughs> Agu- Agu- Aguero has given me points as well. But guys, last this past the uh, fixtures, mm. I got Aguero gave me a hat trick. Then I had Rashford <laughs> and I had Pogba, mm. my captain. You mm. know, supplying the. But how, I, can, you, I had how, a can, you, how points. can you choose Pogba as your captain though? No, I, it, there was something that no, I, was, Aguero, I, cho- I chose him when he, he, was, he was giving those Aguero goals. When he was, but when he was but even so then, Alois, uh, your, your captain should always either, for me, it's a no-brainer. Your captain should either be... The gunman. Aguero, yeah. Salah, yeah. or Kane. 
It's simple. And Sterling. It was Kane. And, and Raheem I, Sterling. I, I had Kane as my yeah. captain. I'll when I got injured, I had what? just had yeah. to switch. I'll tell you what. Mm. Aguero was my, was my captain. He's given me 34 points. Sterling has given a return of 10. If he was captain, he would have given 20. Yeah, he would have been so, 20, plus yeah. the bonuses as plus, well. So he yes. could have been like 23, 24. So, so those are the guys you'd be looking at. But anyway, this is our fantasy football. <laughs> this is the real thing. And there's some news out of London, Barry. It is indeed. Eden Hazard has said he has made a decision on his Chelsea future, but has not expanded on what it is. The 28-year-old said he wa- he had wanted to leave Stamford Bridge after last summer's World Cup and that a move to Real Madrid, a club he had been strongly linked with, would be a dream. Hazard has 18 months left on his Chelsea contract and it is unclear whether he will extend his stay beyond 2020. Mike, I know your thoughts off air on this. You Get think rid that of he them. should leave? Get rid of them. Uh, I think now is the time to, to cash in on Eden Hazard. Yeah. And the reason why I say get rid of him is not because he's 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 a bad player. Yeah. He he's, a, a, he's player a good player. He's the best player at Chelsea. Arguably one of the finest performers in the English Premier League. Yep. Uh, and uh, he will be a good purchase for whatever side manages to, to get his services. But I believe that Eden Hazard, you know, in, in, in the wake of the comments that were passed by, uh, by Maurizio Sarri mm. and then some of the retorts that came from Eden Hazard, you can clearly tell that he is a guy who does not respect the manager uh, in the dressing room. He's he thinks that powerful. he's become yeah. uh, the franchise. Mm. I am the main character at, at a football club and I want to go back to Sir Alex Ferguson and how he dealt with big characters that drew that grew a big head. Right. Right. Yapstam out. out. Yeah. Ruud van Nistelrooy out. Yeah. David Beckham, Beckham out. out. Roy they, were, they were all Roy sent King. out at the peak of their careers yes. when everyone was saying my goodness how do you get rid of Yapstam the best defender yeah. in the English in Premier League Germany, yeah. why because he was now trying to usurp the authority of the manager mm. and Fergie couldn't brook that level of yeah. dissent mm. and so he kicked him out now Sarri needs the same level of support from Abramovich and they get rid of this guy and bring in new players and, and people they are talking about money. Yeah, they're talking about the fact that I oh, know Sarri is struggling but take a look at how Pep struggled in his first season yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. as he was trying to implement a new play style, a new method, a new way of doing things. He struggled. Yep. Klopp struggled initially in the English Premier League. It's only now that things are starting to gel, start, things are starting to tick. So I think Sarri should be accorded the struggles of this season. Yeah. And then let's judge him by the team that he puts together, a team that he can trust. They were spoiled by Conte. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Conte came in, Conte came in and won the title and immediately. Won the title. Yes. Mourinho won yeah. the title yes. immediately. And do you, do you suppose that the way that he's brought in Gonzalo Higuain and then the immediate impact that Higuain has had is a, perhaps a sign and a picture of what Maurizio Sarri potentially could do with another two, three transfer windows? Exactly, exactly, baby. You know, when he brought in Higuain, before he even kicked the ball, mm, we yeah. all said... Here yeah, we it. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. All those chances that are being missed by the guy who went to Atletico. <laughs> your favorite. You won't yeah. mention him by name. Hang <laughs> them in. Check. I, we, we said it. That he was going to score goals. He was going to. Chelsea are now kind of like dangerous. But of it going towards the end of the season. Sure. But look. Let's judge him when yeah. he starts. Well, they, another they do. They do say that in professional football, it takes about three transfer windows for a manager to cement his style yes. on a football club. He's got. He's had one. He's got another two to go. Horsepower unmatched. Talk to beat the best. Speed unrivaled. Sleek and easy on the eye. Let's get behind the wheel of football engineered to perfection. The Bundesliga, made in Germany. It was also cup action in Germany last night and Borussia Dortmund have been knocked out of the DFB Pokal. The Bundesliga leaders losing a penalty shootout 4-2 to Werder Bremen following a thrilling 3-0 draw in which Marco Reus was substituted with a suspected injury. Reus's free kick shortly after halftime ensured Dortmund went into the break in the last 16 tie level after Mailot Rachika gave the visitors a fifth minute lead at the Westfalen Stadion. The Dortmund captain was substituted at the break with Paco Alcatha replacing him. But there were no further goals and the tie went into extra time. Something of a surprising result considering Mm. Barry, the the red-hot form that Borussia Dortmund has been in in the league. Their league leaders comfortably, uh, I think, by seven or so points uh, in the league. But... 
others will say this might be the blessing in disguise that they, they needed, needed you know to manage their workload in what should be a very busy last three months of the season just what they needed and uh, listen uh, kudos to them uh, for getting out of the cup because in truth don't try and chase a a, a, a double necessarily and it's always great it's, it's fantastic but in truth if your focus is the league, things like these actually serve to help the club to focus on that one goal, manage, as you say, the workload of the players. So this is a blessing in disguise. Especially, Alex, if you consider, uh, uh, you know, if you compare the two squads, uh, Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich has got a bigger squad. Yes, uh, yeah. It's got more star players even on the bench. And so they are affected uh, in a very small way by injuries and suspensions. Uh, when injuries happen to a team like Dortmund, they have a telling effect. And so getting knocked out of the cup, like we said, may be a blessing. Yeah, it is, it is indeed. You know, sometimes when you can see, because we, we, we spoke about it, they just need to get a hold of the league. Mm-hmm. They need to have some sort of domination in, 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 to, to dominate the league at least for two years, yeah. you know, in a row so that they can actually bring that competition back into into the Bundesliga. So going out of the cup, I think it's actually good for them so that they can focus. Their squad is thin and they need to maintain that squad so that they focus on it. Paolo Rossi, Marco Van Basten, George Weah, Gabriel Batistuta, Alessandro Del Piero. Serie A has been home to some of the world's finest strikers. And now, they welcome arguably the greatest of them all. Cristiano Ronaldo, the best of Italian football on Z. News out of Italy is that Juventus are unhappy with Douglas Costa's behaviour after the Brazilian flew, flew to Neymar's birthday party in Paris after being involved in a car crash that could have risked his presence on the field for the rest of the season. The Bianconeri management are irritated with this, although they cannot find the Brazilian because he has not broken any rule. But it is certain that the behaviour was viewed as irresponsible and unprofessional by the top directors of the club. Douglas Costa is really not covering himself in gl- any sorts of glory at the Bianconeri at all. Yeah, I think. They- They'll, they'll get rid of him. I yeah. think uh, he's one of the players I think that they, they're going to move on. Uh, him and Cuadrado. Uh, yeah, sure. especially with them of course assured of getting Ramsey uh, an attacking midfielder a very versatile midfielder sure. uh, adding him to their ranks and the money they raise from Quadrado and Douglas Costa I think will mean that they'll be able to buy a top notch yeah. uh, wide man uh, from somewhere in the world and there'll never be a shortage of uh, attractive yeah. players uh, for Juventus and players who want to play for Juventus so for sure. I think he hasn't covered himself in glory here that spitting that incident ban, yeah. uh, earlier on yeah. and the prolonged ban and now he's getting involved in this and all this all serves to irritate uh, those who are paying uh, your salary at the end of the month. <laughs> yeah, Mourinho wanted him, so I don't know if Manchester United are still interested in mm. him after Mourinho has left. Has left oh, yeah. 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 But he's, he's a fantastic he needs a manager like, like, like just, He needs a guy like Klopp who can put a hand around him. Yeah, I agree yeah, with that. I love, I love, I love, love him. Love him. Love, love him. Yeah. Love yeah. him yeah. <laughs> Heaven yeah, forbid it'll it'll Guardiola the, should want him. It'll, oh, no no, no. no, no. Please, no. Oh, no. On that, we on that, if City fun. makes a bid, that's where he's Shucks. going. <laughs> on that nightmarish thought, <laughs> we'll close the show. We'll catch you tomorrow. May God richly bless you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Manande, out. Be sure to catch ZFM Sport every weekday on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station.